Hey guys, welcome to another Varia randomizer of Super Metroid. Uh, this is actually a plandomizer, meaning I edited the map, all the door transitions, and the items, and Samus' sprite this time is the dude from Contra 3. Because you can do that now, and it's awesome, and we're also starting in the Etikun Super Room. Let's do it. I also have the patch enabled that disables the music of this game, so when I go to edit this later, I'll probably add in some Contra music. Hopefully it'll make it feel a little more like Contra or something. I mean, that's the idea. But yeah, this is so cool if you're unfamiliar. If you didn't watch my previous seed that I did, as of February 2020, you can now edit in these Super Metroid randomizers the start location and the escape sequence of the game, in addition to changing Samus' sprite, which has been around since a couple updates ago, actually. Get some missiles here. Because, as you may know, Contra is notoriously difficult. There we go. Somebody else will drop the other ones. Hey, they still make their noise, even though there's no other music. But yeah, unfortunately, we have to get power bombs up here, because otherwise you can't progress in the game. You need power bombs to escape here. There are some tweaks, though, with this Varia randomizer, where they edit certain things. There's actually an example coming up in the Mockball room. Also, I don't know why this guy's skin is blue. Actually, I do know why. Whoops, I was too late on the jump button. Down we go. As if parachuting out of a helicopter. <laughs> uh, this actually surprisingly works pretty well. I guess because Metroid's a shooter, sort of. It ever so slightly feels right to have a Contra dude in this game. What, what am I doing, man? Mockball room, hello. I don't know what, I, I just zoned out for a second there. Let's fix that. But yeah, this is our first example of some things. All right, got it. Um, need to get some more missiles. Yeah, in keeping with the theme of Contra, since this is Super Metroid, not Contra anything, the only way to keep Super Metroid relatively difficult is to severely limit your beams and ammo count and energy tanks. So we're gonna be rolling like this relatively. For a little bit. There we go, we got missiles now. Let's go get the reserve tank and the two missiles behind it. Actually, I think this is our first energy tank in here, if I remember. I think that's what I did with it. Yep. I'm telling you, if you've never gone to the Varia Randomizer website, just go to Google, type in Varia Randomizer. It's the first one that comes up. Should be, anyway. And, uh, if you go to the Plandomizer tab at the top, it shows you a really awesome, very well-designed map interface. You see the entire map of Super Metroid, and you can click on every single, well, almost every single door, and definitely every single item pickup spot, and put whatever you want there. And that's the coolest thing. I can't get over how awesome that is. But this is our first example of a Varia tweak, so you can't softlock. They edited this block so you could just shoot up here. So you don't need bombs or power bombs if you want. It's something to keep in mind. There's actually something coming up in Meridia, too. And actually, this is my first door transition that I edited. Area randomization is this thing. So this is going to dump out at Craid's Warehouse. Because... If you want Craid to be at least somewhat of a normal battle and not a complete wipe the floor with him thing, you gotta face him right away, like I did in that Minimizer seed I played. I don't think I had a single energy tank. I had, like, the bare minimum to fight Craid there. This is actually more than that. But yeah, if this was truly Contra, you would be going for the spread shot right away, so that would- I guess this game's equivalent would be Spazer or Plasma, but once you give Samus that, you're basically invincible, so... Gotta keep it in mind. Let's go. I like fighting Kraid. When uh, you don't have everything to just obliterate him with. Because that's usually what you do. But every now and then, it's fun to go back and fight him as if he is a normal boss. Some more missiles here. Because actually, I don't know if 25 is enough. It should be plenty. Assuming I make contact. And of course, his little things drop him. But yeah, the reason this guy is blue and not looking like he's supposed to is you can customize the colors of everything. You may have noticed that bugs are all different colors, the bullets are different colors. That's another tab of that web page. Alright. You can also randomize the boss rooms, and I thought about doing that, but then I was thinking more along the lines of area randomization. 
So, yeah, this is I'm really excited for this seed. I can't wait for the end because, hey, he's the same color as the last seed I played. That's accidental. I thought I made everything yellow and uh, orange this time, but somehow everything's kind of got a bluish tint. I don't really know how that color interval scale works in this game. I don't know how they programmed it. Whoops. Still using that circuit controller, so sometimes it thinks I press diagonal things when I don't. I love that. The sprite of him aiming down in the air is really awesome. I also, for some reason, I feel like I could wall jump better with this guy. I don't know. It's all a visual thing that's in my head. Yeah, Kraid's a fun fight, man. When you just have puny stuff, I enjoy it. Yeah. Scratch one bogey. And we get bombs for that because that is just solely to save on power bomb ammunition. So now it's off to pink Brinstar. You can't edit every single door. There are randomizers of this game where every single door, entrance and exit, you can randomize. Actually, you're not in full control though. They just random, random it for you. This one, the Varia randomizer, is a little bit more manageable because it's area randomization, not every single door. So, for example, Kraid's Warehouse only has, this is like the one spot in the game that only has one possible entrance exit. And that's the one that we came in here, the, the warehouse entrance. When I first came up the elevator. Yeah, this door here is the reason why I kept that boss Kraid too, because I wanted to come in here and get, I believe this is more missiles. And I definitely need them. I'm, I'm a little low here. But uh, Upper Norfair, that has maybe about, let's see, the two at the top of the elevator. You got the warehouse normal entrance and the left tunnel that leads to the Meridia Glass Tube. Those are two entrance exits that you can edit. There's also the one that leads to the Lava Dive right before Lower Norfair and the Lower Norfair Exit one. I think those are the only entrance exits you can edit consisting of all the doors in Upper Norfair. So that's, if you can understand what I just said without visually seeing it. Get back here, buddy. Yeah, getting those missiles. Um, that's an example of how it's more manageable is what I'm trying to say. And I actually did generate a randomized seed, not a plando, with area randomization, and I do plan on playing that. I'm gonna play as Bikini Samus, or Justin Bailey Samus from the NES, in an 80s swimsuit. I haven't practiced it or anything, so it's gonna be completely random. I won't know where anything is, but this seed that you're watching right now, here's our super missile so we can get the items in here. Um, which I believe is more supers. But yeah, this is a plandomizer, meaning I edited every door and every item pickup. So I know exactly where stuff is. As long as I remember, I actually generated this like a day and a half ago and then was doing some stuff. So when it comes to the escape sequence, I want to talk about that because I'm excited about it. If you watched my previous seed, that was also February 2020, using the start escape randomizer, uh, the escape wasn't randomized and it was kind of, uh, it bothered me. I, that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to play this again. And here's our first beam, wave beam, yeah. Now it's like Contra. No, not really, but sort of, you can imagine. It's all about imagination. Now, I might actually do a save state again because I swear to you, this position changes on my console and what computer I'm playing it on. There it is, okay. I had to use the save state and reload it because I wasted all my missiles before I finally figured out the spot. And next time I play, I'm not gonna remember either. But I'm telling you, it changes. If I'm playing on my actual cartridge and whatever emulator I'm playing on and whatever laptop, it changes, I don't know. It doesn't, I know. But here's Speed Booster. I guess I could have killed Spore Spawn. Contra's all about throwing bosses at you. Jeez, go completely horse. That's the ducking animation of Contra. <laughs> That's funny that they use that for Shine Spark. Yep. Uh, 
We have enough energy to risk it. Let's do it. To the side hopper room. Just don't get hit by the big one. Get out of here! Okay, that was a little bit foolish. But Wave Beam, of course, was to open this. And Gravity Suit is in a really cool spot. Now that we have Speed Booster, we're going down to the waterway of Pink Brinstar. This is our next energy tank. Already not like Contra, because if you've ever played a Contra game, you die in one hit. It's the one with the inf infamous Konami code. If you want to see a really awesome, the very first Contra game playthrough, you gotta go to Nintendo Capri Sun, man. He did a One Life thing like nine years ago now. I still watch that video sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. He's really good at that game. He's casually talking. It's almost like sometimes the way he talks, it's like he's not even paying attention, but yet he is because he's wrecking the game as he goes. That's what happens though when you grow up with a game or play it a lot when you're young. I remember playing Spider-Man on the NES a lot as a kid, and I remember being pretty decent at that, but I haven't played that in years. I want to play Ninja Turtles too, the original one. Nice short charge. Ooh. And that nets us the gravity suit. Because why not? Ah, oh, we got the green fatigues. Or overalls, whatever they may be. Still got the blue skin, though. <laughs> that animation every time. There's a Pac-Man game on the Super Nintendo where you slingshot his face every two seconds and try to make him do stuff. I forget, what is it? Pac-Man World? Or the Adventures of Pac-Man or something. And this blue guy reminds me of a character you see in the city of that game. I used to have a video on that, but I think I deleted it because it made me wince when I went and listened to it or something one time. But all right, another area door transition edit coming up. Also, you may notice, look at this little platform that's not normally here. That's another example of a layout patch to make navigation easier. But now we are in Meridia, and this is a forced gravity jump. I purposely did this because I wanted to do... Whoops, I forgot to press jump. Hang on. So you pause the game just before it fades completely black, hold jump, take off gravity, still holding jump, and you jump high enough. Crap, I messed it up. Now the crabs are coming. Hold on. Let's take care of business, yeah. You know a tough guy that's really awesome is Sly Stallone, dude. You can't hate that guy. I regrettably watched a Jimmy Fallon interview just because he was on it, and I wanted to hear what he had to say. I had to endure stupid Jimmy Fallon. I can't stand that guy, man. There it is. And there's going to be another instance. We're going to do the lava dive room and have to do a gravity jump there. Because space jump is in Lower Norfair. And that's why I'm so proud of the way that I edited the areas of this game. I completely locked out Upper Norfair and Criteria. So it's impossible to get to Samus' ship in this seed until you beat Mother Brain. Because the Torian escape door leads to the wrecked ship map room. And eventually, oh whoops. I don't know, maybe I won't explain it, but just know that because the last time the escape sequence was not random, I ensured that this time it's like the longest escape ever. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I gave myself eight minutes to get back to the ship, and it literally is going to be like going through every area of the game. There we go. Another energy tank there. So, we're just slowly working our way to Dragon here without high jump. High jump is going to be the reward for defeating Dragon because if you don't have that or, um, glad I got that. Without high jump, you have to speed and jump while going through that door if you want to get up here. Unless you can infinite bomb jump, that's probably another way to do it. I don't know if there's enough room in the, down there to super tight short charge. I can't do that anyway, I can only do the lollipop one. That's what I call it, because you tap B three times, like lollipop. And Sama stutter steps, and then you build up the speed boost faster. But there's an even tighter one than that. Alright, let's do it, Mama Turtle. This is where we get Spring Ball. And I'm aware that... Ah, oh, whoops. Alright, try that again. But I was going to say, I'm aware that people don't really like me playing Plandomizers as much. 
because I don't, it's more interesting, I guess, to see the surprise element of, oh, that's where that is, or whatever. But I'm telling you, if you go to that website, I think that's close enough. Yeah. If you ever click on that Plandomizer tab and start editing the map yourself, it's a load of fun. It's the coolest thing, and I can't get over it. I talk about it all the time, and I'm never going to shut up. Because it's great. I'm telling you, if you do it yourself, you'll say, Oh, he's right. And then you'll make your own plan to my seeds and play them and be like, Gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. Randos are fun, but Plandos... I don't know. I want every game to have a Plando. I know Ocarina of Time does, and I did one. Whoops. High jump is a thing. It's doable, though. Come on. A wise guy, eh? There we go. Two. I think I left the super missiles, actually. Also, why doesn't that work? Sometimes you descend fast, and other times it just doesn't register. Or something. It reminds me of the Mitch Hedberg joke, where he's like, That joke's funnier than you acted. Go into my head and come back out and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, I miss that dude. Love that shiny spark every time. Let's go. Wall jumping. Oh, yeah. Alternating walls. Whoops. Come on, D-pad. Work with me. Man, that, I love wall jumping up that. That is one nice shaft. Speaking of tough guys, like Sly Stallone, what happened to that? Why is there like a new definition of manhood? The 80s was all about that. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. All, like look at the video games. Every main character is jacked. Now everybody's scrawny and is like, what if we read a book instead? I mean, nothing wrong with that either. I'm scrawny as crap. I'm just saying. If I could be Rambo, I would. That said, though, I actually saw a picture of myself in college when I had people helping me work out, and I actually was more muscular. It's weird, because when you're lifting and stuff, you don't notice that you're getting bigger. But here's our spread shot, Spazer. Yeah. Now we're cooking with gas. And we have gas. Not really. Although, depending on what you've eaten, you may. How do you guys, what's the first time you heard the bean motto? You know, beans, beans, they're good for your heart. The more you eat them, the more you fart. But then there's also the alternate, where it's like, beans, beans. Uh... Crap, how's it go? The wonderful fruit, even though it's a vegetable, so this one's already stupid. Or, but yeah, it's like, beans, beans, the wonderful fruit. The more you eat them, the more you toot. I think that's the first one I heard, because my dad said that. Or and then I learned of the word fart. And by God, if my world wasn't changed. I don't know. Let's do it. The snowy, swampy meridian. Gonna go to Batwoon, and here's Charge Beam. So now we're already beamed up, ready to go. And that is because I don't think I have enough missiles. Actually, that is probably enough to take down Batwoon. And you may be saying to yourself, what about Grapple? What about Dragon? If you want to see a crazy Dragon fight, I did it suitless without Grapple in the minimizer seat of the playlist of these things. I also did it in some other one too, but that one was the better one. But I will be getting Grapple here. Because it's Contra theme, dude. It's all about picking up weapons and stuff. Sort of. Although, the true way to play Contra, from my understanding... I don't think I ever beat that game. I played it a little bit, but I'm... I'm no Nintendo Capri Sun, that's for sure. But yeah, watching his video, he was saying how good the spread shot was, and I mean, it was clear, I think it takes up like a whole screen. Let's go, Batwoon, looking a little blue there, fella. 
I could have sworn I slid the thing into the yellow and orange area. So why is everything blue? I don't understand. It's all good though. Let's see, what else haven't I talked about that's pertinent to what's going on here? I mean, I don't want to ruin the surprise. I actually am nervous about that one that I randomized the seed that I haven't touched yet but generated because it does have boss randomization alongside the area randomization. So I have to learn where the doors, the doors go to. So that's already a challenge. Then I have to remember that for the escape sequence, wherever that may dump out. Plus, like, Crade's Room, for example, could still be Ridley. So if I find that and think, oh, it's Crade's Room, that's no problem, and then go in there, boom, game over, because I have, like, one energy tank and it's Ridley. But that's exciting at the same time. But I just wanted to do one of these first. And I saw the Contra Sprite. Man, I'm... There we go. Whatever works. And I guess in a way that did. I don't know why I said it like that. Alright, grapple beam should be right over here. Also in the annoying sand pits, I put the same things. There's two Varia suits, just in case you accidentally fall down one and not the other. But I don't know how, unless I uploaded this to like a Google thing. Google Docs or Drive or something. There's no real way to share. Like, I could give you the seed number and tell you what it's called, but to generate it exactly for yourself knowing that, I still don't think that's possible, really. Yeah! I feel like a real commando. I don't know, I'm telling you, something about it works. A Contra person in Super Metroid. I think it is just, like I said earlier, the fact that Metroid already is all... Heavily built around shooting a arm cannon. But we're not gonna go down that road again. The teenage me that so avidly defended Metroid Prime as not a first person shooter. Because Metroid is not a shooting game. Or whatever I was on about. Trying to defuse the people that are like, oh, Halo or Metroid Prime, which is better? It's like they're not even in the same camp, you dope. But then they're always like, it's in first person and you shoot stuff. How is that not? Oh, whatever. Shut up. Hi, Dragon. Let's go have ourselves some shrimp. Red bullets, huh? And red fish. Reminds me of the fish you have to catch in Twilight Princess. Also, reminds me of all the fish that I'm gonna catch in Animal Crossing. That's right, son. Get ready. That's such a cool sprite. I still love it. Big fish. Are you gonna be nice? Second go? Second go. He's doing it. Roar. Said the fish. I looked up a video the other day of bird noises that are like, I don't know, it was something like the weirdest bird noises in the world. They're all like science fiction laser guns. Yeah. This is where you would need a, a corny line from an 80s movie. I'm really desperately trying to think of one right now. What's a good line for just electrocuting somebody? Shocking. No, it's not good enough. It's not clever enough. I'm just trying to think of stuff that they say, but here's high jump. Let's get out of here. You know, like those videos that are just like all of Arnold, however you say his name, Schwarzenegger. Why can't I say it? Normally, you don't even think about it and you say it right. Suddenly, I'm having troubles. But yeah, it's a compilation of all those one-liners after a kill. Freeze. Cool off. That kind of stuff. Let's, uh, there is an energy recharge in here, right? Although there is an energy tank coming up w alongside the Varia suit in the sand pit. We need Varia. We don't need it, but uh, we actually might. To do the gravity jump in the lava, do you need Varia? Does it slow you down? 
No, it shouldn't. Speaking of that too, once again, they altered how the suits work in this game. Gravity does not protect you against heat like it does in the vanilla game. You need Varia. Of course, you could choose it so that it does and keep it the vanilla game, but the new standard is a, a mode called Balanced. Where they both protect against enemy damage, but gravity is only useful for maneuvering in the water. It does nothing about heat elemental damage. And then there's a third option. Where they build on each other. I think gravity does protect against heat, but only a little bit. And you need both in order to be fully protected. Something like that, anyway. Well, let's do it. Spring ball is nothing, that whole area, because it's just slow and cumbersome. And I'm already kind of tired of Meridia, although it's nice. Bye, spongies. And now we're going to see another area transition. The glass tube entrance to Meridia jumps out in the lava room with Ridley's head. So that means it's our next gravity jump. Both of these pits, like I said, have the same thing. The Varia suit and an en energy tank. Just in case. But again, I don't know why I'm even saying that, because I don't really know how to share this. I guess it was more for myself, knowing I just wanted to go down one of them. Come on, sand. There we go. Spring ball, too. I don't have to do any of that high jump business. Still, if you think about it, this is not enough energy to beat Mother Brain, I don't think. I don't remember the bare minimum to survive the Mother Brain blast and trigger the cutscene. This actually might be now that I picked up that energy tank. Can't remember. Oh yeah, like I said, we're getting close now. We're about halfway. Killed two bosses. So now you gotta remember the map now. By the map room down there, it led to Green Hill Zone. Or the jungle part of Grinstar. Which is where we started. So we gotta find a different door. The one up top leads somewhere, I can't remember where. I think it loops in on itself. A lot of the remaining doors that weren't part of my plan, I made loop in on each other as a dead end. But yeah, let's do it. Gravity jump, first try, let's do it. I think I got the feel for it. So again, pause and just before it goes black, hold jump. Take off gravity, still holding jump. Yeah. It's actually pretty easy to pull off once you know how to do it. So let's do it. This is actually going to be the most difficult part of this. I'm actually going to save because I have to fight the dude, Gold Teresa. Plasma beam is in his room too. So that's the challenge is to navigate the walls, jump around his bullets, grab plasma beam, and then wreck him. No space jump either. That's going to be where screw attack is just to make escaping that room easier. There are some tricks. I actually learned of a new one. I think the last seat I was like, yeah, if you can't infinite bomb jump and you don't have space jump, you can't get out of there. But you can! You need to have moonwalk enabled and do this crazy running jump combined with a wall jump from the energy recharge room. It's not on screen, so I know I'm already losing everybody. But that's another example of a patch. Those platforms are not there in the vanilla game, but it is a patch so that you can navigate this without space jump. There's two settings. There's Varia tweaks that are just there by default. And then there's an even further one that adds navigation patches. Like for example, you may have noticed that the green hatch in Meridia was out. So after I did that gravity jump, I was able to go to the left and go to the main part of Meridia, which in the vanilla game you can't do that because the green hatch is on the other side. Oh man, Spazer's not gonna do crap to you. Whatever. We need this energy. Power bombs for safety without space jump. That's a little tricky. Alright. Actually, that wasn't bad at all. So now, the race to plasma beam. Because I don't think Spazer is enough to take care of this guy with the energy I have. Unless I'm a dodging expert, and sitting on his face is not a dodging expert. See, there it is up there. 
crap! It didn't work. I want... What do you want? I want plasma. Crap, I keep hitting the seal. All right, buddy. Oh, I thought I had it. What the heck? This is not good. At least he's not hitting me yet. All right, you know what? Let's exhaust the supers. We're gonna get a bunch of them after this anyway. I, yeah, I'm screwed if I don't get plasma, dude. I can't stop hitting the stupid bird statue. Give me some energy. There's no way. This is suicide. This is why I saved. Am I gonna die? Dying in Super Metroid. When you know what you're doing. I mean, this is a challenge that normally is not present in the vanilla game. Going for it. There's no way. He's not dropping enough energy. Oh, I thought I had it. Come on. There it is. Got it. You're done, buddy. Man, if only that worked. Angling down, you could just camp up there. But it's just off screen for it to not register. He's doing the bats, he's almost gone. Gotcha, you son of a... Whatever. Cocky little freak. Well, that was nerve-wracking. Give me space jump, baby. Well, that's crazy. Oh, also, without screw attack, we gotta resort to this. Definitely want the energy, because we still have to fight Ridley, and I don't really have much ammo. That might be a little tricky. It's been a while since I fought Ridley using charge beam and stuff. Primarily. I still never learned the uh, ammo counts and stuff. I remember watching speedruns where they were like, Yep, Ridley is the standard with him is X amount of supers followed by this many plasma shots and then ball up and he's done. But I didn't I don't remember what those X amounts were. Eat it. Oh that was awesome, dude. Why have I never done that before? Maybe because we're stupid. This guy's like a saw blade, suddenly it's battle tubes. Yeah, without screw attack, this is a little bit ridiculous. But it's nice. I like forcing these little challenges on myself that are not too challenging to the point that you get mad. After all, defeating yourself is always fun. Crap, this is known as the worst room in the game, and I can see why. Powerball. Imagine this without space jump. That's ridiculous. Actually, you know what? I don't think there's an energy... There's maybe one energy tank before Ridley. I think the power bombs of shame. Out of my way, Nimrod. I remember my friend had a workout. I think it was his dad's workout book. It's one of those exercise books that lists various exercises you could do. And it was written by Arnold. Back in the early teenage years when we first got into lifting weights. By obligation, of course. It's funny how that changes. When you're young, you lift for the girl. And then when you're old, you just go to the gym so you don't die. Of course, sitting down is more fun and then you do die. That's kind of more of what I'm good at. I do want to get back to the gym though. But yeah, going back to that, it's weird seeing those pictures of myself. I was still tiny and stuff. Just by the off chance that I leave this as an energy tank. I'm not going to explore this whole area, but I do want to check fireflies real quick. But yeah, like I said, when you're lifting and getting bigger, you don't realize it. At least I never did. It takes somebody who hasn't seen you in a while to be like, Are you lifting weights? You look different. Because I remember the whole time I was always frustrated that I was still a scrawny piece of crap. It is weird. 
weird. Body dysmorphia and stuff. How you could literally stare in the mirror and look at every little feature of yourself and see one thing that nobody else sees. Not so much like shallow how kind of thing. Uh, let's save just in case because I'm actually barely getting through this. Isn't that a Christmas song? I'm barely getting through tomorrow, but still I won't let sorrow bring me way down. Who is that, Shania Toy? No, it's not Shania Toy. Shania Toy. I don't even listen to country. I think I just remember my mom playing stuff like that on the radio. Back in the days. What the heck? I'm inside the blocks. Do you guys remember that 2XL robot for kids? It was like a learning robot. You'd put the cassettes in and press some buttons, and he would talk to you, and his eyes would light up and stuff. I remember getting him one Christmas. I don't know, just thinking about it. my mom playing songs on the radio, maybe think of that. Yeah, there's our last energy tank, I think in the whole game. Until the escape sequence, I put one in there because we have to swim through lava during the escape too. Well, we should be good. This is plenty for Ridley. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, maybe. The low super count makes it a little bit more difficult. At least for me, who doesn't memorize the counts. I think it's still more supers than speedrunners use. But you never know. Still love this room every time when the Norfair music is playing and stuff. It always seems to be escalating at this point when you get here. Anything to recharge? I know I need power bombs, so these, these guys are definitely... Is it 100% guaranteed that those guys drop power bombs? Because it seems like they do every time. I guess I'm already maxed out on everything else. Weird. Let's do it. Fantoon will be the last boss, of course. I mean, of course, because we're here. He's blue again. I don't want to waste all my supers because we're going straight to the wrecked ship. And there's some pickups there, but Torian is not far now. And I need them for Mother Brain. Not necessarily, but it would be nice. Speaking of, the Zebatites. I need more missiles, man. 50's not enough. I don't know how to the Zebatites skip. I did it once. can't tell if he's done. He's doing that weird pattern where he's just swinging his tail. So usually that's a signal that he's taking enough hits, but it's not always. Nope, he's not done. Crap. Why can't you give up like that one time, man? Still don't know how I did that. He like knocked me into the door, I fell in the lava, and simultaneously shot him, and then he just froze in place. No, I... I I'm assuming that he's done. He's not done. Crap. That would be bad to die on Ridley. What the heck's going on here? No, Crystal Flash, I don't have enough supers for that. Crap. Are you done yet, pal? Yes. Wow, that was... A way closer than it needed to be. But I got you, you son of a crumb. Two girls for every boy. 
and energy tanks. And there's screw attack. Nice rewards. Two girls for every boy. Those were some khaki little beach boys, I guess. Yeah, we're going Surf City, gonna have some fun. Yeah, we're going Surf City, singing monotone. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. <laughs> that, was, that song just, they sound so unenthused about it. That wasn't even the Beach Boys first, that was Jan and Dean, isn't it? That was my first CD ever, the best of 60s surf. Because it had Wipeout on it, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Just recharging a bit here. Because there are no energy tanks until the escape sequence now. And Fantoon is gonna get the best, the best, the best with me. Actually, I have Plasma. He's gonna be a cakewalk. I like Grapple Beam. I don't know, it's just a fun way of farming. So what else is going on? Uh, I got my hair cut finally. I skipped it for like three months. I was trying to save money and now in the lead ups to my trip, you know how they say, give it two weeks before something major, just in case it's a bad haircut, you have two weeks for it to kind of correct itself. That is assuming your hair still grows at a normal rate. I'm balding because I stress out. But it's okay. Actually, it's not okay. It's okay to bald once you settle down. But when you're still playing the field, as they say, it's like that George Costanza quote. I don't remember how it goes. How old is he when he says it? A man in his 40s or something? Balding and lives with his parents or something? I don't know. I don't live with my parents, though. Thank God! I remember somebody made that wrongful assumption based off of one of these Super Metroid videos, actually. Because I was escaping in my car, and I played it and recorded it in my car on my laptop's battery life. And I said something like, yeah, I had to get away because my mom was there or whatever. And somebody was like, oh, you're just a moron who lives with his parents playing video games. Another one of those. But nope. She was living with me. And I was being the good son and giving her a place to stay. In her time of trouble. I don't know. Guess it's easy to hate, hard to love, as they say. I don't even remember this stuff, but I think it's just all ammo pickups from here forward. Going to the wrecked ship. And to the back seat. Windows up. I don't know why that came to my mind. But it did. Remember when that song came out? Interesting times. Let's see, something else that was going on. I recently looked up that comedian Sarah Milliken from the UK, a female comedian, and I actually find her pretty funny sometimes. Never heard of her before until just recently. It's weird, it made me realize that a lot of comedians over in the UK, they don't really get shown on American television. I mean, I understand everybody hates America, so that could be part of it. Even that, the fact that we claim America, it's like we're the United States, it's not even ours, it's North America. What about Canada and Mexico? And then South America. We're, oh, yes, but we're the United States. Look at my dick. I don't know. I went on about that in something. I think it was a Star Fox Adventures episode, how I remember reading a factoid that uh, some really expensive warships that nobody uses anymore because they're pointless. Like, every country decommissioned theirs, but the United States still pays to keep some running just to be like, look at this big ship we have. I don't know, I don't even remember the specifics about it. 
But anyway, that's enough of that, because when you go down that road too much, they're like, Oh, neo-Nazi, get out of our country. Oh, no. But it doesn't take much. All you gotta do is open your eyes and see that the world is screwed up. But that's enough of that. I am grateful for the things that I can do. And I understand what was sacrificed so that it could be so. So shut your mouth! Alright, Phantom. Hey, you got the same... Seriously, the colors are exactly the same. How is that possible? I picked a different slider color. Let's do it, pal. See how you like charge plasma in the eye. Eye injuries are something I want to never happen in my life. I think I'm developing a lazy eye, which is frightening. That's another one of those great things when you're playing the field. Like, hey, baby. I know you're right in front of me, but I'm gonna look this way. With only one eye. Tell all your friends. Take a picture together, and we'll see which one of us looks like an idiot. That's the thing, too. Girls always look good. Guys do not. Of course, I realize that's subjective. Some people think guys are everything. Maybe if you're Rambo. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Yeah, well, crud. Nah, the most I ever get, I can look at a guy and understand that he's considered attractive based off of societal norms, and then be jealous of it. But not the way that girls get jealous of other women and be like, Oh my gosh, look at what she's wearing. I hope that she has chlamydia. <laughs> yeah, like, they always immediately go to some terrible thing, just because, I don't know, it's like a jealousy rage or something. Almost done, all four bosses. But this is the map room right here. Here, this is the room that, uh... The Torian escape is gonna dump out at. Well, let's actually mess around in the wrecked ship because we need some super missiles and normal missiles. The normals for the Zebatites and the supers for Mother Brain just to make it a little bit easier. It's gonna be a tricky fight though, it can't take too much damage. Not that Mother Brain's easy to dodge at all of her attacks. Let's see, what else has been on my mind that is something to talk about? I don't know. I thought I had something. I remember just before I fell asleep, I had a really deep thought that I was pondering, and then I fell asleep, and now it's gone. I hate when that happens. I gotta keep a notepad. My creative writing teachers always said that. Keep something with you at all times to jot ideas down. Gotta get back to that jotting thing. Did anybody ever have a journal or a diary when they were younger? I think I did for a tiny bit. I never wrote anything profound in there. I think I usually just moaned about crap, as we do. Now, the regrettable part about the wrecked ship is this room that I'm headed to right now. The robot room. Just because you have to sit and wait. And waiting is the hardest part. Tom Petty said that. That's all there is. The powerbomb one is later. After the bowling room. Love that slowdown. Like I said, it's like biting into a beefy hamburger. So now I believe we just got more super missiles and missiles out here. So we gotta just screw our tack our way over. Oh, thanks, Bob. I'm gonna beat ya. Ah, oh, why it doesn't cut it open? I thought the screw attack would just really pull it apart. What the heck, dude? 
Alright, we're gonna go the Shine Spark way then. That thing again in my way. Seriously? Get out of here, you dope! You know, screw it. I know you could just shoot it when you're next to it. There we go. I was onto it the first time, and then that thing got in the way. It's pretty quiet without music, man. So... We're very close to the end now. Fantoon is beaten, and the other exit to this area, you know, the road that you never take in this game, that leads to the gold statue room, also known as the Torian entrance. And yep. So we got this bowling room to do. What do you guys think about this coronavirus thing that is like in the news constantly? It's kind of crazy. I don't really know what to think about it. I haven't really read enough stuff about it. And I've heard all sorts of different people saying different things about it. All I know is I'm traveling very soon, and it's a mild concern, but also not really. But then at the same time, I don't know if that's being naive to be like, oh, well, clearly it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, whatever. Kinda nuts though about that one doctor in China who was trying to warn all the people and the government silenced him. It's messed up. And he ended up dying. Among a slew of other people. That's a weird thing though. You always think of like politicians and stuff as the epitome of evil and all of these things, but. Can anybody really be that evil? Is there such a thing as an evil person? Because doesn't it seem like something straight out of fantasy? Like bad guys, villains, that want to conquer the world and stuff? Surely people have to have some kind of humane decency, you know? But here's Ice Beam, because Torian is next. Let's do it. We gotta dump back in there. But I don't know. They say absolute power corrupts absolutely. These things are not written for no reason. So let's do it. Sponge bath, the energy tank, and... That is the last pickup before the end of the game, really. I don't know, I could definitely think of some political people that I thought were evil. Still do, kinda. I don't know. I guess it's almost easier though to hate the rich and powerful. But then again, how could you be a leader of anything and be expected to make the right decision every time? I think it's too easy for people to disagree on stuff. And that's one thing I, I constantly always thought about, is even if there was only two people alive in the world, forced to live together, there would be conflict. Because everybody's different, and they have different things. Don't know. Don't even know why I'm talking about this crap. This is a weird room. The brains that just sit here. Or whatever they're actually called. Oh yeah, this room though, I always forget. No, you stay out of the maze, right? You just go in the water and go to the end? One of the ways, either it's the way forward or the way back is kind of strange. No, it's this thing right down here. Yeah. That's right, it must be the way back that's weird. Okay, so this should lead to the golden four. Yes. So notice how we still have not seen hide or hair of Criteria or Upper Norfair. I mean, I guess technically we could have seen Upper Norfair, but wouldn't really have been able to do anything. It's out of the way. 
It is possible, I guess, to get to Samus' ship before this, but the way I planned it out, that's completely out of the way. So let's do it. Toria is fun every time. I kinda wish there was more to it, but at the same time, it's perfect how it is, too. What Metroid game do you think has the best ending? I mean, I would say this one. Metroid Prime's final area was kind of neat. I just like the atmosphere when you know you're in the final area. Just the way that they designed the terrain and everything. The enemies that are all around there. Baby Metroid. Hey, they're the color that Samus' ship was last time in the seat I played just before this one. I don't know, I keep on talking about doing another one of these and then recording Animal Crossing and all the stuff I have planned still. Hey, he's the same color too. Actually, it's kind of fitting this time around. It almost looks like Red Falcon colors from Contra. Sort of. I remember, it's actually been a while since I looked all that. Well, he's red. But yeah, at the same time, right after I get back from this little trip I got planned very soon now, um... The plan this entire time was to go do that like, keep focusing on this stuff and go nuts with the YouTube junk. Then go on the little vacation thing. And then when I came back, focus even harder on... ...replacing... ...my job and cutting back on this stuff. That still has to happen, so... I don't know, it shouldn't really impede with Animal Crossing, though, because that's set up to just play it casually every day and do whatever. Some of the bigger projects, I don't know. But I'm definitely gonna save because the escape sequence, I know for a fact, is definitely random this time, because I made sure of it. And I have eight minutes to get back to the ship, which we, once again, have yet to see. So it is possible. Plus the energy, too. There's one part that's gonna scare me. It's the part, when I first played this game and beat it, the only way I thought you could escape Lower Norfair, because I never knew of the fake wall that existed. Right above Fireflies. What is the bare minimum amount of missiles needed to destroy all Zebatites? Assuming you don't also hit the Cheerios? Anyway. Mother brain. Blue again. I actually fell asleep last night, listening to blizzard sounds. Part of me greatly misses... I don't know, I guess real life stuff? I don't know, like the whole time I was listening to it, I was picturing being locked up in a cabin with no electricity and just a fire going. And maybe something to boil in a pot. And it actually seemed... Better than anything modern. Let's go! Gotta be careful though, can't take too many hits. Crap, what did I just say? Alright, the supers are done. Last couple missiles missed every single shot, that's nice. I still don't remember, I don't- this should be enough energy, but I don't want to take a hit just in case. Especially from the ketchup beam, because that thing does a ton. Man, if only I knew exactly how that color scale worked, I would have made Mother Brain red. Then it would have fit. There it is! We're definitely gonna survive that. Come on, bring me down to two nuts. Actually, this should work. She always does the little pocket shots. Do the scream! 
there it is. We did it. Sort of, but now the craziest part that I've been looking forward to is next. The eight minute long escape sequence. Hopefully eight minutes is enough. I don't see why it shouldn't be, especially because I know where to go, I think. I don't know, we'll see. But I couldn't imagine a scenario like this and a randomizer that you didn't plot all the doors yourself. You really gotta learn the doors before this fight. But that's exciting though. It kinda adds challenge. Isn't there a Metroid that's naturally that color, or am I losing my mind? From one of the Metroid Prime games? Well, there's that big orange one. This is not orange. Purple and green. Nice combo. This escape sequence too is the hyper beam is able to destroy anything all gates can be opened from either the front or the back it can destroy power bomb blocks super missile blocks speed blocks everything it's like a one-size-fits-all beam Say eight minutes, hopefully, right? Yep, okay. This is the crazy part. We shall see how it goes. Eight minutes seems like a ton of time, though. There's enemies. I think there's always enemies in this part, because this technically isn't the randomized escape part yet. This part's always the same. But all other enemies should be cut out, and that's to reduce lag and stuff. So get to the main door, as always. But instead of being dumped out at the random shaft, or the normal shaft of Old Torian, uh... This time it's gonna be the map room in the wrecked ship. And if you've been following lo along with the door transitions, you know we've got a very long trek ahead of us. Here we are! This is kind of nuts, though! You never see this part of the map blowing up. Okay, so we know. Go to the other side of Ocean Fly. Whatever you would call it. The moat. No, this the room after the moat. What the heck is it called? Either way, build up a shine spawn. Yeah. And we know this goes to Lower Norfair. The back road, so the only way out, the only other exit that can be possibly randomized is the one that's right by Ridley's head in Upper Norfair. Which means we have to traverse the giant lava room, which is this part as a kid. I thought it was the only way to escape this place because I didn't know about the fake wall that led to all this stuff. This thing. As a kid, I never knew you could just run behind that thing. I use the x-ray scope and it doesn't reveal it and stuff, and apparently I bombed right next to it, but I never pushed to keep walking into it. Wait a minute, what am I doing? Don't go down here. So yeah, as a kid, this is what I always did to leave this area, and we have to do it here. It's the only way. Uh, and my energy is actually scaring me because this destroys you. Screw attack and space jump cannot fail, otherwise I'm dead. Don't miss the door, don't miss the door. Okay, I got it. Good thing, if I sank, I would have been done. Wait a minute. Oh, we gotta go up. Through the Mickey Mouse room, down, out, to the elevator. Yes. Elevator we know leads to the head, the head leads to Meridia, go to Meridia, and then... What happens after Meridia? Crap, I don't remember, I gotta see it. I love that all this stuff is blowing up. It's so cool seeing all of it. Run. 
mean, we still got plenty of time. It's okay. The standard is three minutes, and even then, I don't know. The, the standard three minutes is still kind of tight. You have like a minute something left over usually. All right, Ridley's head. The energy should be fine, but I know there's an energy tank. Whenever we finally get the blue Brin Star or Criteria, where the side hoppers are and Morph Ball. Okay, Meridia, so we go to the Meridia map room. No, that links to Green Brinstar, which is where we started, which has no connection to Criteria. We gotta go up. I remember. Uh, yeah, this way will work. I think this is right. I'm trying to think, because there's still that other door in Green Brinstar, though, that leads to Red Brinstar normally, where you would do Red Tower Climb. I don't remember. I think that just loops in on itself. Or something. It loops to something useless. So this exit does not lead to Red Brinstar. This leads to Upper North Air, I think, right? Yes. This exit. So now we gotta get to the elevator of Upper North Air, and I think go to the left exit. That leads to Blue Brinstar, which gives you access to the ship. I keep calling it that because it was Brinstar once upon a time on the NES, but in this game it's still considered criteria. It's so used to enemies being around. So yeah, here's an example. Destroy the power bombs with their hyper beam. That's so cool. Four minutes to go. That should be good. I think it might be way too much time, actually. Here's another map room that you could potentially spawn out of during this random escape. I like how the elevator's exploding, too. That just looks cool. Alright, so I believe it's the left one. Uh, where the heck is this? This is... Wait. I think I may have chosen wrong. Yeah, this is Meridia. We don't want to be here. Crap, I forgot. Oh yeah, obviously all doors are open during this thing too. I think that was a modification that needed to be made. Uh, wait, I don't need super missiles. I'm pressing select. So I used to using super missiles there. Yes, here we are. This is what I was looking for. There's that energy tank. I don't know why I put that there now. And super missiles, why the heck did I put them there? Oh, we're home free, baby! With more time than the standard still. I should have made it less than eight minutes. Ah, cool. Ah, well, now we know. Then again, to die here would suck. You'd have to do Mother Brain stuff all over again. Wall jumps. Sucks I can't shine spark up this thing. Like usual. Ah, cool. Last room. Yeah, we're definitely good. I guess five minutes would have been too little. Actually, five minutes would have been just enough if I didn't make a wrong turn. But six minutes would have been playing it safe if you knew the exact path. Hey, we got another cool blue purplish ship. But there you go, we did it! That was fun! I definitely like that random escape. Especially having to swim through the lava like that, that was crazy. the planet exploding sound effects. They're gone. That's weird. That's considered music? To mute that, of all things. I'm curious the time of that one. It seemed relatively quick, actually. The recording is showing less time than the previous scene. Yeah, under an hour, just barely. 
That should be almost 100% items, too, of everything I placed, except for the one sand pit, which, remember, I told you, it also had the Varia suit and an energy tank. So that's two pickups I think I missed. I think I picked up everything else I possibly placed, because I made sure everything else had nothing. Like all of Upper Norfair, and all of Criteria and stuff. But yeah, it was cool. I enjoyed playing as that Contra sprite. Especially in the beginning, it really kind of felt like... Contra, Gunstar Heroes kind of thing. Sort of. I don't know. It's fun to pretend sometimes. So yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous. You guys are gonna watch these videos. And every single one of them I'm gonna be talking about, Yeah, I'm going to this trip. And I keep on saying in every video that I might not have time for more, and then I can record another one, and in that video then I'm like, yeah, I might not have time because I'm going on a trip. Like, at this point, people are probably saying, are you really going on a trip? Well, yes, I am. It's two weeks away as of me recording this. Still gotta get some things together for that. But I have like this weird thing where if I have something to do, like get a haircut, I'm like, okay, today's the haircut day. And in my mind, I'm like, today is all about the haircut, as if there's not 24 hours in a day that you could do other stuff too. I mean, I usually do. On haircut days, I usually also go shopping for food and crap. The errands. I need to do that, though, too. I didn't go shopping when I got my hair cut. Well, yep, like I said, I did generate that randomizer. I have yet to play it, but I know it's 80s swimsuit Samus that somebody designed. And it starts out in Bubble Mountain. I made sure that was the starting thing, because that you do pick that. Even though it's randomized, you do pick the starting location. And then it generates everything based around that, obviously, because you need Morph Ball in this game. So if you choose to start somewhere weird, they gotta make sure Morph Ball is accessible in that spot. So that's all I know. 80 Swimsuit Samus, starting in Bubble Mountain of Norfair. There's area randomization and boss door randomization. So that could be interesting, but we'll see if I have time for it or not. So what do we get? A little less than 100% probably? Yeah. Alright, well thanks for watching you guys, and I will see you in the future. Have a good one. Take care.